Hello, it's Susan Fouché with Voices for Learning, where we help you grow as a voice actor. It is Audiobook Wednesday, and in this video, I am going to show you my method for how I get a new character voice. So the question is, you know, hey, can anybody be an audiobook narrator? I get this all the time. Like, that's so cool. That's such a cool job. I want to be an audiobook narrator. Well, I think, honestly, if you are a good reader, if you can read out loud and you can read out loud for a long period of time, I think that this job is for you. But a lot of times we get books that have more than one character or voice in it. And so um, the idea is like, well, if we're presented with a new character voice, like somebody has to have a Russian accent or somebody has to have a Cajun accent, how do we handle that? How do we learn a new accent? So I'm going to show you my method on how I do it. And um, this trick has helped me out in many audiobooks. And this is also a technique that I teach my other students who I coach, and it works great. So enjoy. Okay, so um, I uh, was given a multi-actor project. So I'm not the only actor in this project. It's like a whole bunch of different people. And I was given specific lines to do. And evidently, the author liked me so much that he's having me do some more lines. Um, and so he has this one line that he wants me to do, um, among others. And it's for a character who has a, uh, what does he say, a Texas accent and a honey drawl. So I've been to Texas. And I've never heard a honey drawl. Of course, like, I can think of it in my mind. You know, it's kind of a caricature. Um, but everyone I know who lives in Texas just has a general American accent, which is kind of, like, typical for so much of this country. So um, what I need to do is I need to find somebody who has a Texas accent that I can imitate and I can channel into this line right here and that I've highlighted in yellow. What do you want to know my opinion on? That's the line. And I have to say it in a Texas accent, honey drawl. And the special note is I'm supposed to say the question in a way that would have annoyed the listener with my best Texas accent and honey drawl. So the person that I thought of who um, has a Texas accent and is just kind of this like lady, prim and proper, this person I'm thinking of doesn't necessarily wear a lot of jewelry, isn't crazy over the top, but she definitely is a Texas lady. And that is the former um, first lady, Laura Bush. And of course, this is not a political post, um, we are actors. We got to pick the best people that we can find. So um, what I did was I went to, let me minimize this, I went to YouTube and I found a video of an interview with Laura Bush and I recorded that video. I downloaded it, put it in an MP3 format, and that'll just have to be another video that I show you how to do that because it's actually really easy. Um, but that piece will have to come later. Um, then what I did was I took that mp3 that I downloaded from YouTube and I stuck it in my Studio One program in a track. And then I kind of like spliced it up where it's just her talking because remember an interview, it's going to be like a couple of different people. It's going to be the interviewer and the interviewee. And so I just kind of like took out her um, pieces. And then what I did was, as you see, like in this track, I spliced it up and I took each little piece and I copied it. So this piece right here, here's what it sounds like. First date, we played miniature golf. Okay, she said, first date, we played miniature golf. They're asking her about what was her first date with George W. Bush. And she says, first date, we played miniature golf. First date, we played miniature golf. And then I copied that right here as well. Then I have another little clip where she's talking about still her first date, and you can hear it. We met the night before at a friend's barbecue. So she said, we met the night before at a friend's barbecue, and I've copied that here. 
And then right here, she talks a little bit more about their first date. You can hear it. And then the next day, our first date, and went out to the uh, Midland, Texas, miniature golf course. Okay, so she's talking about the her first date, miniature golf course, and then I copied that here. So what I've got is I've got three separate audio blips of Laura Bush, and each one I've copied. So I can hear it, and then you can also see there's a space between them. So I've, I've got the, the audio, and then there's a silent space where I can repeat that out loud and then more audio, and then more space, more dead silence, where I can repeat that out loud. I can practice it. So let's go ahead and just kind of practice that. And what I'm going to do is I'm trying to get um, her speech pattern. I'm trying to get the way she says her vowels, because that's what determines an accent in America. Um, and so I'm looking for those, those couple things, the speech pattern, and the way she says her her vowels. So here, let's go ahead and try it. And you're going to hear me listen, and then I'm going to repeat what she says in her, the best accent I can of her. Listen, repeat again, repeat, imitate her. Listen, imitate, listen, imitate. And this technique right here has helped me out so many times. It does take a little bit of time, but it absolutely 100% works. So here we go. First date, we played miniature golf. 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 We met the night before at a friend's barbecue. We met the night before at a friend's barbecue. We met the night before at a friend's barbecue. We met the night before at a friend's barbecue. And then the next day, our first date, and went out to the uh, Midland, Texas miniature golf course. Midland, Texas miniature golf course. And then the next day, our first date, and went out to the uh, Midland, Texas, Miniature Golf Course. And then the next day, we met for our first date, Midland, Texas, Miniature Golf Course. I was so thrilled to have twins. I sort of pictured... Okay, hang on. So this next group right here, she's talking about something else. She's talking about when she found out she had she was pregnant with twins. And so um, it's just another little piece. It's again, that same technique. I take the little bit of audio, just a, you know, a few seconds. I put, have it in my track and then I have silence where I have time to repeat what I can repeat of hers. It's not going to necessarily be able to repeat the whole thing, but I'm going to try to repeat what I can. Again, it's copied. So I do it again. And then here's a longer blip again about like when she, what what she thought, what her thoughts were when she found out she had, when she was pregnant with twins. So I just do this, same same technique. I was so thrilled to have twins. I sort of pictured two babies and thought, well, that's so greedy. I sort of pictured two babies and I sort of thought, that's so greedy. I was so thrilled to have twins. I sort of pictured two babies and thought, well, that's so greedy. I was so thrilled to have twins. I sort of pictured two babies, and I thought, well, that's just so greedy. To want Aww. two at once, but I was an only child, and I really wanted to have more than one child so that they'd have each other. And, of course, that's what really happened. Well, I was an only child, and I really wanted to. To want Aww. two at once, but I was an only child, and I really wanted to have more than one child so that they'd have each other. And, of course, that's what really happened. Well, I was an only child, and I was thrilled to have two children, two childs, more than one child, so they could really have each other. And that's what really happened. And so you can tell, because I've been listening to her speech pattern and I've listened to how she says her vowels and how she kind of enunciates certain things. I've kind of got this accent down. It's different than an Alabama accent. It's different than, you know, East Tennessee, West Tennessee, Kentucky. This is a very distinct accent. And I would say it's kind of you know, to, to make it more honeyed, though, to make it sweeter, I'm going to go ahead and just raise my pitch just a little bit, uh, but still kind of draw it out and just really do that. So let's look at the script one more time. 
And the only line that I have is, what do you want to know my opinion on? And so I'm going to give him a couple different takes. And it'll be something like, what do you want to know my opinion on? What do you want to know my opinion on? What do you want to know my opinion on? And that's how I do it. So use this technique. I promise you it will work. It does take a little bit of time because you have to do some research. You do have to practice it. But clearly this author liked me enough to hire me to do some more work for him. And it's not because... I was lazy and I just off the top of my head just thought of something. I actually really, you know, took the time to um, do some research and think about what the previous accents would sound like. Take a time and listen and put it in a track so I can listen, repeat, listen, repeat, listen, repeat. And this is how you learn how to imitate people. So like if you want to do imitations of like Morgan Freeman, you know, Bill Clinton, um, uh, I don't know, some of these people who've got very distinct accents um, and speech patterns. This is how you do it. That's how this is how you do it. So thank you so much for watching. Be sure and like, be sure and subscribe for more great content. I put out um, audiobook videos every single Wednesday and then Fiverr videos every single Friday. The goal is to make help you make money so you don't have to work whatever extra job to do voiceover. You can do voiceover 100% full time. That's the goal. Um, and the voiceover is not a side hustle. It is the main hustle and it is the main hustle that you love because it's a great, great, great job. So I can't wait to see you next time. Have a great day. Bye.